So I get asked on a fairly frequent basis, Tyler, what is your favorite lure for bass fishing? And without a doubt, my favorite lure is the square bill crankbait, the topic of today's video. But surrounding the square bill, there are so many thoughts, so many questions. What, how deep to throw, what color to throw, what size square bill, what brand square bill, all that stuff. We are gonna answer all those questions today and hopefully you guys learn something at home to become a better angler. So let's talk about it. Well, welcome back Team TRF. Of course, my name is Tyler Anderson. If you guys are new to the channel, my goal is to help you guys become better bass anglers. And so the topic of today's video is going to be how to throw a square bill crankbait, where to throw it, basically kind of the 101s about square bill crankbaits in reference to the fall. There's two different seasons that I really throw a square bill and that is in the spring and in the fall. And I do tend to throw them in different areas in the spring versus the fall and definitely different colors in the spring versus the fall. And so today, this one is all about the fall. Now, if you're watching this video in the spring or any other time of the year, you can definitely learn a few things that might apply. But of course, this is going to focus mostly on the fall to late fall time of the year. So let us begin. The square bill crankbait, a beautiful, wonderful lure that falls in the category of the crankbaits, the baits that you crank. And if you guys are unfamiliar with a crankbait, of course, I'm doing this video kind of starting off in terms of uh, beginner level. A crankbait is a bait that is usually hard plastic made of a hard, uh, you know, whatever kind of plastic this is, uh, usually colored in some form to look like any sort of forage the bass eat. And then of course it has some kind of bill that is usually clear colored that allows the bait to dive beneath the water. So when you pull on the crankbait, it dives beneath the water. And the reason why this is called a square bill is because, well, uh, the bill is a square. The bill is shaped in, the, in the, the shape of a square. Now this square bill here has been uh, beat up a little bit, so the edges are not quite as distinct as they once were when I got it out of the package. But this is generally a square bill crankbait, and the reason why I love these things is because the action on them is so unique. The, the, the skinnier the bill you have, of course, and the longer it is, the deeper the bait will dive, and the skinnier it is, the less it will wobble the back end of the bait back and forth. So you have a super skinny bill, it will tend to have more of a, a shimmy or a, a small wobble. A square bill, basically when it goes through the water, it pushes more water out of the way, so it forces the back of the bait to wobble back and forth, thus dis dispersing a lot more water than your average crankbait. And so this thing excels in shallow water. And of course, you can really only throw it in shallow water because if, if you wanna keep contact with the bottom, as in my experience, you wanna do with most crankbait, you can only throw a square bill in the shallows. Uh, this is the KVD 1.5 Strike King square bill. Definitely one of the most popular in the world. It's the one that I throw. I love it. We're going to talk about colors here. We're going to talk about where to throw it, but I want to start off by talking about the forage the bass eat in the fall. If you guys missed the video that I made on uh, swim jigs, I believe it was. No, it wasn't swim jigs. I made a swim jig one. You can click up here. It was the one that I made about fall topwaters, and I talked about the type of forage the bass eat in the fall. I'm not going to go over all those forages because you guys can check them out in that video, but especially when you are throwing a square bill crankbait, I found that it's 95% of the time you're going for fish that are eating bait fish or shad. That usually means that you're going to be targeting areas not around wood because I found that shad and, and, and bait fish don't usually hang around wood. Occasionally bushes. It's most of the time open bank, uh, like open rock, uh, occasionally some grass, uh, but really I'm focusing on rock in the fall. Those bait fish love to push up against the bank, and if they're not up in the bank, they're in the, you know, the creek channels, and they're not usually sitting around a whole lot of wood, especially in the south, in the Highland Lakes areas where I'm from here in Texas. So the majority of time, I'm throwing a square bill in the fall for fish that are eating bait fish. Now, of course, if you guys don't know what bait fish are, it's anything from minnows to, you know, this small, to gizzard shads that are this long and even longer. And so I want to throw a square bill that matches exactly what these fish are eating. I'm gonna talk about matching the hatch in every single instructional video that I do because it is that important, especially when fish are keying in on a certain type of forage. So if you ask around your local uh, tackle shops, your gas stations, your boat ramps, are the fish eating alewives, gizzard shad, threadfin, whatever, I'm, my mind is blanking. There's a whole lot of them, minnows, shiners, there's a whole lot of stuff. So you have to find out exactly what your fish are eating. That way you know what type of square bill to throw. Now we're gonna talk about color. So now that I've quickly covered the type of forage you're looking at those fish eating, I'm gonna talk about color and that is the number two thing. So the second most important thing about throwing square bowl crankbaits is throwing the right color. Now the first misconception that I want to 
dispel is that you have to throw the exact same color as the forage you are targeting. And that is not always the case. Uh, because of the square bill being a reaction type lure, which means the fish aren't always looking at it for a long time, discovering, figuring out, do I want to eat that? Is, is that looking good to me? It's most of the time this thing blazes by their face. They turn, they say, I'm going to eat that, and they eat it. And so your color only matters in terms of getting the fish's attention. So if the water is super clear and you throw a bait like this, that is literally green and black, unless you somehow have green and black minnows in super clear water, this is not gonna be a smart idea for the most part. Of course, you're gonna find lakes, super weird situations where fish are eating a color you never thought they'd eat. But I'm just going for the generalizations here uh, that this color here in clear water is probably not going to be the best choice. You're going to want to throw a more shad oriented color. So the two colors that I love throwing the most in terms of this square bill are a variation of the sexy shad. This here is a sexy shad chrome. It is a uh, kind of light blue back with of course that yellow stripe in the middle and a black dot. And I love throwing this square bill here, especially in the fall in Texas, where we have a ton of bait fish that are looking like this. Little glass minnows, of course, any type of small bait fish, this thing really, really imitates. And especially on sunny days, this chrome here can really, of course, reflect sunlight. And another one, if I'm throwing in a bait fish situation, is going to be a pearl. Now this here, I don't exactly know this, the exact color, but I'll have it linked below. But this here is one of my favorite pearl colors to throw, uh, just because it sticks out really well in dirty water. You think this would stick out in dirty water, but actually the fish feed in dirty water better on silhouettes, and this plain white, instead of all these colors, actually reflects better in dirty water. So these are kind of my two shad presentations. You got the sexy shad, and you got the plain white. I think this, this covers most of the gambit of the bait fish you're going to be throwing. But let's say you have dirty water, as I have in today's video. You guys will see me in a second catch a few fish. I'm fishing like this, this water is horrible clarity. I mean like dirt, dirt clarity water. And so I know the, the bait fish in this body of water are not green. Of course they're not green. I don't know of any, maybe some shiners are green, but like hardly anything is this color. But the reason why I'm going to have success, as you'll see in this video, on this color is because I needed to get these fish's attention and let them find the bait. And so that is why oftentimes here in East Texas, in North Texas, a lot of the water is not super clear. And in many of your ponds across the country, unless you have a ton of grass, your water is not going to be really clear. So can you catch fish in dirty water on a sexy shad imitation? Of course you can. But I feel like your success rate is going to be higher uh, throwing a color like this because it sticks out and it allows the fish to find that bait easier than it would be to find this. Fish feed extremely based on vibration uh, and silhouetting in dirty water. And this square bill, of course, provides plenty of vibration. Plenty of vibration, plenty of sound, and plenty of nice, colorful silhouettes. So, that is all that I have for you guys in terms of colors. Now we're going to talk about how I work the square bill in the fall. Of course, come springtime, I'm going to have a different video when it comes to square bills on how I work it then. A little bit of a preview here. I do work it in the spring a little bit slower than I do in the fall. I found that fish are a little bit more aggressive uh, in the fall because they want to feed up getting into the winter uh, than I do in the spring. But my main retrieve when it comes to throwing the square bill is casting it out there and giving it a stop and go. So we're going to head out on the water real quick and I'm going to show you guys earlier on in the day some of the retrieves that I was able to use to have some success on the square bill around a rocky situation. So, we'll see you guys on the water. So one square bill tip that I have for you guys in terms of retrieval is uh, when you are retrieving a square bill, and I'm just going to be talking about rocks right now, I like to keep my rod tip at, if, if you were to look at it on a, on a, you know, a clockwise scale, I try to keep it right at about 5 o'clock. And so I don't want to have my rod tip completely down like this, pointing at the bait, and I don't want to have my rod tip up. I want to keep it pointing at the water. Of course, not completely at the bait. That's more of a deep crankbait type thing. I like to have a tiny bit of an angle to it. That way, when I get the bite, it is an easy swing into the fish. And if I keep the rod up here, it'd be a lot easier to rip it out of the fish if I get the bite. So just keeping it right here at this exact angle, in my opinion, gives me the best feel and control over the square bill. Because oftentimes when you're throwing a square bill, you got to be in control of the bait. So it's not just you know, cast and wind, you got to be feeling what it's hitting down there. If you feel it hitting a huge rock or a huge stick or something, you got to lessen up, kind of let it float up a little bit and kind of, you know, work the crankbait over the, the structure. Square bill is not just a normal cast and wind bait, in my opinion. It, uh, it is built to be worked. And here's something else. When I retrieve the crankbait, oh, I've got a fish. Oh no! 
dang it. Ah, I was, ah, I was just about to give you all a tip. And I literally got absolutely like destroyed, but it felt, that was weird. That was a big one. Gosh, dang it. Ah, they're not eating it well, guys. They're just not. When I'm throwing a square bill in the fall, I'm usually not doing just a straight retrieve. As I mentioned a second ago, I kind of like to work the square bill over the cover, whatever it is, rock, sticks, grass. And so I usually kind of like to speed up my retrieve if I feel like I'm in an open area with no cover around. And if I start to get closer to, uh, to a sort of cover or structure, then I will, uh, then I'll slow down my retrieve. I might give it a few, you know, a reel and I might give it a stop and kind of two twitches and then keep going. Really, you have to determine what level of activity your fish are at. So how, how you know, active they are, how much they want to feed. I've never found a situation where they like like a very certain cadence. So like people have like a song you sing where it's like, you know, bum, 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 bum. And the fish have to like bite on like the second of the, the pumps. I found that you just have to find like a, a, a right speed and a right amount of action. Cause you're gonna have days where you're gonna have to like straight up, just slow roll the square bill in. And you have other days where you have to consistently pop, 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 because the, the bait fish or whatever they're eating is, uh, is very active that day. So that's what I would say in terms of retrieval. It's rarely straight in. Of course you can catch them straight in. It's, it's like a spinner bait. You get, oh gosh, there's one. Did he get off again? No, he's on, he's on, he's on. That's my fun. He's just small. Wow. Alrighty. Let's go. Let's go. Fish number two, baby. Heck yeah. Well, well, I have a feeling we're gonna catch a few more. That's what I'm saying. Well, howdy folks, TRF here from the future, realizing that I forgot to cover one very specific topic when it comes to uh, square bowl fishing in the fall and really crankbait fishing in general, and that is the hooks that you use. Now, I'd say 99, if not 100% of crankbaits on the market today come with two treble hooks, one underneath the bill of the bait, somewhere on the belly, and then one at the very tail end of the bait, kind of two main treble hook locations. But of course, there's... I'd say two, maybe three main types of treble hooks and one that really comes standard on most crankbaits, especially most square bills. Uh, the ones that come standard, especially on a Strike King square bill, like the KVD 1.5 and 2.5, is just a straight round bend. It has the hook point pointed straight vertical. So of course the hook point comes around and then it points straight up toward the sky. If you were to you know, put the treble hook straight on, on your kitchen table, the hook point would point right toward the sky. Then you have what's called, uh, I think it's called a triple grip or a wide gap treble hook. And that is where the hook actually bends in toward the horizon. So if you were to look at the hook, it is actually pointing, I'd say at the two o'clock or the 10 o'clock mark, depending on how you're looking at the treble hook. Those two hooks, of course, have different places. I'm gonna talk about those here on the water here in a few seconds. And I don't wanna go too deep into the intricacies of treble hooks on crankbaits, but the two main that I use, of course, are the round bend and the triple grip. The round bend are used most often when fish are, are coming up to your crankbait, they're slapping at it and not quite eating it fully. They're not taking it in their mouth. They may be hitting it with their face or with their body to try uh, to knock out that piece of bait fish uh, and so oftentimes when the fish are doing that the uh, you know open bend the, the wide hooks are going to be better because they're going to have more of a chance of snagging that fish but of course if your fish are like if you found the right color and they are eating a square bow crankbait the best hook to throw is that triple grip because when the fish eats it just because of the angle of that hook it hooks the fish a lot better and does not allow that fish to get off so with that said let's hop back to the other day and in talking about switching up your hooks, in this scenario here, I'm probably not throwing the right hooks. Um, I'm gonna reel in real quick so I can show you guys what hooks I'm throwing. I'm throwing uh, what's called like extra wide gap or triple grip hooks. And these here are, they have like a smaller shank, a smaller uh, a opening on the hook point for a fish to eat it. So this is this works really well when your fish are eating incredibly well, like eating it down their throats because these hooks, once you get them hooked, they're hooked really well. But these fish today are kind of like s gently slapping at the square bill. So the normal hooks, you know, the, the normal open wide bend hooks that striking crankbaits come with would be uh, better in this scenario. So I should probably change those. If I keep missing them, I'll change it. 
So that right there was topic number three on how to properly retrieve the square bill. Of course, I talk about in all these videos. I know some things, but I don't know everything. So of course, your body of water, your pond, your fish may act in a completely different way uh, than the ones that mine than the ways that mine do here in Texas at this specific lake. So always make sure you are testing your retrieve at every lake, even though you caught them yesterday doing a stop and go retrieve or a straight, you know, straight retrieve back to the boat, the fish could change on a minute's notice as bass oftentimes do. They don't really read the rule book and if they do, they forget it the next day. And so you guys always should be changing up your retrieve. And that's what I love about the square bill. It allows for so many different types of retrievals. Now the gear that I throw the square bill crankbait on because of the size of the KVD 1.5, it's really not that heavy of a bait. It does cast well, but it is not a heavy bait. And so I don't like to throw it on a uh, super heavy line because I found that the heavier the line, the less casting distance you get. You know, the line has to, has to go through the guides and it has more friction going through the guides. So I throw a square bill 90% of the time on 10 pound line unless I'm throwing it around some super jagged rocks, some super like thick wood, grass, I'll occasionally throw it on 15, but the majority of the time I'm throwing it on 10 pound line. When I first started throwing crankbaits, I rarely ever threw them on 10 because I felt like I was kind of cranking it through so much structure down there that I didn't want to frame my line and risk the chance of that fish getting off. But the more that I've thrown crankbaits, and especially a deep crankbait, I realized that these crankbaits are designed to be thrown on 10 pound line. The, the distance of, of depth that you get on the box, so I think this square bill crankbait it says dives to you know two to five feet it'll get to almost four and a half five feet on 10 pound line and that is because they designed the bait with this pound test in mind and so i rarely throw a square bill on eight pound that's a little bit light for me but i think the majority of the time like i said unless i'm throwing it in some crazy thick cover my favorite rod that i have found so far in the lose lineup to throw a square bill crankbait is the custom speed stick six nine medium heavy it is the square bill crankbait rod it says it right there on the rod itself Incredible rod. Uh, it gets good casting distance. I hardly ever lose fish on this thing. Hookup ratio is great. And of course you can fight fish very well just because of the amount of give that the rod has. It gives all the way down to like the second to last guide. So definitely a fan of this rod. I have it on the, the BB1 Pro speed spool. My favorite crankbait reel of all time. And then the line is 10 pound Seaguar of Brazex. I have loved Seaguar line ever since I started bass fishing. Uh, I trust them, you guys should as well. And the reason why I choose a Brazex over Invisex Red Label, you know, Tatsu, is because this line here is, is, is made specifically for throwing reaction baits uh, and, and really throwing baits that get in a lot of sticky situations in terms of uh you know fraying your line and so this line is incredibly as the name abrasex uh you know says it has incredibly abrasion resistant and that right there is my square bill combo of course all that stuff will be linked below for you guys to check out when you guys buy your tackle i don't care if you're buying this combo or any combo please shop at tackle warehouse and use the links down below to enter the site uh it basically tracks y'all's purchase to my account and it helps me make a living so if you guys like the videos please support uh your boy by ordering off tackle warehouse through the links below so that is all that i have for you guys hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned a few things that is always my goal here on the channel if you guys are not a part of team trf by subscribing turn those notifications on as well uh youtube makes it harder for you guys to see my videos every week and so the more of you guys that have notifications on and have if you're using a computer have the page bookmarked check in i put videos three times a week so of course if you ever see videos for three weeks that's because youtube is not showing you the videos i'm still putting three out a week and with that said we'll see y'all on the next episode on here on a beautiful lake on Tyler's Real Fishing.